Hey, guess what? I've only gone and got myself an allotment. Woohoo! very different type of video today because I'm not at Worthing and I have driven I haven't filmed any driving I've been driving into London and oh my god driving into London for the first time in absolute years in my van it's been a worry but I'm here to see lovely Sean James Cameron hello Sean what are you doing here then I've, oh, I I've know. just come out of the house and I just saw you but but stood by the gate with your bowler on I know well I've come to pick up a sink have you yeah <laughs> <laughs> from my garden. From your garden, I, I gather. Well, we have a choice of two. We have a big sink or a small sink. Oh, lovely. And I think it all depends on how much we can lift the big sink, whether you want that one oh, yes. or not. This is for my outhouse when I eventually get around yes. to building it. And it will be lovely because it's a butler sink or a... Um, Belfast sink. Belfast I, sink. Well, I don't know what the difference is. A butler, Belfast... I think it's just they both set start with the same letter, don't they? Maybe Beginning somebody letter. can tell us in the comments Yeah, let below. us know. What is the difference? Um, but I I love them. There's a big ceramic, old-fashioned, yeah. 19... Well, Worth 100. a bit of money as well. Probably. Is it? Yeah. In exchange for a jacket. Yes. So... Uh, Which I'll try on when we come back. Lovely. So we're going to go in the van. Yep. Yeah. Take a little trip there. But the thing is, now the location yes. is top secret. Oh, is it? So even though you're driving, I'll have to put a blindfold on you. Oh, that's okay. okay. Uh, I drive pretty much blindfold anyway with one <laughs> eye, so we'll be all right. Come on, then. Right. I'm just taking Richard down to the secret location. So just go straight down. Yep. And if you get up to 60 miles an hour, we'll then... We'll have a ticket. We'll then go into the vortex and then we'll, and <laughs> yeah. then we'll end up by the power of video at the garden. It's that sort of day today. It's the day for hats. Well, I just had to bring my bowler up to London. It feels like it should have been in London. Well, if you go to Covent Garden and put that on the floor, you might get some money in it. Well, you never know. <laughs> Got the aircraft of London going overhead. Yes, you try and pretend you're in the countryside and then you have a plane going over. <laughs> we stepped out the van and uh, here we are in your lovely garden. In the bit of the woodland. The so woodland. Oh yes, this is the woodland, just to prove that. Let's go down, to the, uh, go down through this let's go down lovely area. Wood. And I will open up the cabin. Ah, here it is. <laughs> Famed from all the videos on Sean James Cameron's channel. There you go. Do you want Look to go in? That. You might be able to smell the, oh, yes, let's, you know, the linseed oil. Oh, yeah, it's very familiar it's, smell, it's, linseed oil. Let's, uh, let's just pop in there. When you were talking about your table, I thought that's exactly what I've used. I, I do like a bit of linseed. It's a bit of a tight squeeze for two. Yes, but uh, we are, you can't see us, but we're, <laughs> we're in here. <laughs> So you've got potatoes in there and now you mentioned the word chitting now I'm sure that every gardener knows what that is just sounds very rude to me what is chitting well chitting is when you take a potato yeah. and you'll see that the potato has a rose end right and it has and uh, it has the other end well from the rose end is where the uh, shoots will come from and we call the shoots chits Oh, I see. So that's when you're, if you've got them at home and you start to see them starting yeah. to sprout and you think, oh, they're no good. Yeah. So you've got to put them in, in, a, in a light, frost-free space. So that's why we've got this. And the chits will come up slowly. And then in March and April, we'll put them out into the ground. Uh, but don't put, don't put them in the dark, because some people will put them in the dark and then you'll end up with the translucent... Uh, shoots which break off and then they are no good to man or mouse. Oh right, we don't want any of that nonsense. Well I'll put these back to bed. This is all what goes on 
in Sean's shed. This is what it's like having an allotment. Hard work by the sounds of things. <coughs> All that chitting. Now, now some people would call this a mess, but it's a working garden. Yes. And, you know, you can't crack eggs without having an omelette. And I do like a good omelette. <laughs> <laughs> Some people even crack the eggs first. Well, this is the thing. I mean, I think what's interesting when you watch YouTube videos and different people doing different allotments or gardens or whatever mm. it is, everyone's in a different state of play. Some people yes. have been in their allotment or their garden for years and you just think, oh, that's what it looks like. Then other people have only been in there five minutes or they're changing the whole... Well, this rhythm. now will completely change within the next month because we'll start sewing in earnest yes if he does if he if he comes if he doesn't mind you know yeah uh, but we'll be putting in our on, our onions our potatoes our shallots our beans our peas so march april and may are really busy so at this time of year you've just got to enjoy it so you're going to enjoy gonna be, the quiet you'll be putting in the whole shallot will you the whole shallot will be in a shebang <laughs> Excellent, because that's the thing. We're in February when everything's dead and it's just beginning yeah. to come to life. Yeah. But this I'm. Is, this is what's known as the hungry gap. The hungry gap. Because you've used all your food from oh, yes, of last course. year, and if the, so, this is the first February that I've been on this uh, site. So there's nothing in there. But if right. you come back next year, there'll be some cabbages and things. But yes, the hungry gap because people got fed up of just eating the same three things. Yes, of which course, was just cabbages which t tidied them over the winter yeah. period but yeah. we're not here to look at the gardens particularly as nice as it is i'm you here to throw out the kitchen sink <laughs> yes <laughs> me with it no doubt so uh, show me the sink right. then so you brought me over to where your kitchen sink is, it is but i've got two on you've got two got two there's an option a big a big one or a small one right but now that i've seen the big one i think you might need uh, some uh, cattle to go with it yeah it looks like a cattle uh, it is a big one isn't it isn't you it? can imagine that being in a very large country house i think if you put that in your outhouse yes there'd be no space for no you. space for anything well i could i was looking for a tin bath maybe oh yeah <laughs> it, would, in that. it would do that but that's about it um not terribly deep but then a tin bath you know you've got to fill by hand so maybe that's what you want the other one looks much more the size that I, I want, but yes. I've noticed you've got coronation uh, plates and... Uh, Long live the king, that's what I say. <laughs> Long live the back, king. Back last year, I was going to do my videos as a dig for victory, and I wanted to live in 1940, I think it was. Right. So I was going to do my videos based on what was on the radio and what was in the news. So I got all the stuff for it. Oh, right. And then I realised very quickly, oh, just get on and do your bit of garden. Get on and do your garden. This is the BBC Home yeah. Service. Because I wanted to film it in slightly sepia tones. Oh, lovely. And I got to the point where I thought, oh, just put out the video, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Maybe in the future, yes. you know. So th these sinks, though, they look heavy. <laughs> they are really heavy. That's why I've, I'm pleased that you've picked the small sink. Yes, I'm pleased too. <laughs> I was thinking that. We've got to get that through your garden here. Um, and Plus up you've into got the to van. get it out, though. When I've got to get it out the other end, otherwise it's going to be a permanent feature of the van. Yeah, <laughs> the first van with the Belfast sink. Yeah, it? there you go. That could be a feat. That could be a thing. So we've got to do that as well. So let's get the wheelbarrow. Have you got one? I have, but I was just thinking now. Isn't it? It's a pity that videos weren't like life. Yes, you could just go. And then it's in your van. And it's in the van. But what's going to happen now will probably take about twenty-five minutes. Yes. Right. One wheelbarrow, sir. And it's bending the legs, isn't it? Yes. Oh, find water. Right, do you want to bring that over? Oh, yes, good idea. <laughs> Turn that over. So, oh, I see. and then turn that over like that. Then slide that in. Right, ready? Yeah. Mind your backs. Oh, look at that. We may have come up with a bit of a flaw here. <laughs> I don't know. Um, the plug on that, the thread on the plug, mm. uh, looks a bit knackered. It's the first time I've seen it. <laughs> but that explains why it might be in a garden and, and not in somebody's kitchen. Yes, yes. But, but I think you could take the, 
the nut off, is it? Is going yes, to, you can take the, that flush up. No. Yes, there's a, there is a nut. There is a nut that you can take off so that the thread for the adjoining pipe um, would be there. I mean, I'm sure that somebody somewhere could fashion something yeah. in there. Um, I will appeal to people's better judgment here. It's certainly still worth giving it a whirl. It well, looked lovely in the outhouse. I would rather have this in your house than just sat on the plot, to be honest. Well, that's very kind of you. So what, Maybe when I see it in three months and it's all nice and shiny, yeah. I'll be going, oh, bloody hell, that's <laughs> £200 worth it. <laughs> yeah. So now what we've got to do is wheel this up to the van. Yes. Well, that'll be all right. And then get it in the van. I've got a nice Will bag. the van go, though? That's why I'm sort of pleased you went for the small one, because yes. I have that big one I think we'd be here all day yes I don't think you would have got very and far. I don't want another puncture yeah right um, I'll get the other end and we'll wheel it right yeah <laughs> So then, it's a nice space. It is a lovely space. And uh, I, I think I could see you on a plot. Do you reckon? You know? Yeah. But I don't think you, I think you would probably be telling the committees what to do within a week or two. <sighs> yes, I think they'd be throwing me off. They'd be fed up with me telling them what to do. But could you see yourself having a plot if, if there wasn't a committee involved? I could. Um, I could see, in some respects, I could see myself having a plot, but in others, not on a legitimate site i still think i need a field a so a bit of land yeah. yeah a bit of land for you know because i just want to do mad things yeah on my land i couldn't be held by convention mm. i you know if somebody's got a steam engine or a traction engine i want to be yeah. able to bring that on the land get them to do a bit of threshing you couldn't really put a canal in here could you not <laughs> It's a shame. It well, just it just cries out for a little canal. And I a little know boat. somebody though. I know somebody who was given a who was given a farm. It was a great opportunity. Given. She, G I'm sorry. Hang on. Let me just get this in my head. <laughs> they. You know somebody who was given for nothing. She believes in this thing called the secret, where you put out into the universe what you want, and the universe will give it to you. I've heard of this. And she was at an event four years ago now. And at the end of the event, this guy said, I know this isn't the place to say this, but but I've got a little small holding and I'm getting too old now. Does anybody want it? Um, you just pay the electric and the gas and um, teach the villagers how to grow their own food and you can have it. So within a week, she had uh, packed up from Crystal Palace and she's gone now to the countryside. But what I found rather clever about her is, because she's got a field, and she wanted to plough it, but she didn't have any money. So she contacted the local plowers archaeologists. Right. Uh, the, the, uh, the heritage people. Yes. So she now gets her field ploughed every year by the Heritage Club, and she just gives them food. This is, well, this is, uh, this is exactly so it. So it can be done. Yes. Um, if anybody out there happens to have, um, you know, spare field or a farm, with um, a thatched roof, yes. a, a farm with a thatched roof and um, all the outbuildings. Um, if you've got any of that and you know you don't want it, it's too much effort and you want to give it away, I would love to make videos and make the place look good again. Meanwhile, oh the kettle's boiled, we're going to do that, have a cup of tea, then we've got to uh, think about a sink. I hope he's got a plunger. Well then, it's some time later, and after a two hour journey back from London, where Sean lives, is in sort of South London, but oh my God, driving up to London, um, it just, I, I haven't been up to London for so long. Driving away up there in the old van, 
it just goes to show how wonderful uh, Worthing and Sussex really is. You get the other side of the M25, there's a little bit of country, and then once you carry on, suddenly you're in suburban. And it goes on and on and on. I, uh, I went past a couple of lovely old churches, but surrounded with this rather horrible, ugly, modern uh, sort of 50s, 60s houses. There was a few Victorian terraces in there, but I don't know what's happened to the wonderful world of England. The uglification of England is certainly rapid. And I know that many writers were writing about that at the turn of the century. Even Victorian writers were saying, Georgian England was lovely, but there is an uglification going on during the Victorian period, thanks to the industrialization of the country. Anyway, managed to get up where um, Sean lives. It's actually, it is actually quite nice, um, but you do go through some horrible places. And of course, everything is 20 or 30 miles an hour and you're creeping along. And I just crave to be back in Sussex, which was a long and tedious journey to get back. Thank you to Sean for this wonderful uh, sink. It's a bit grubby. There's a couple of issues I need to deal with it before we um, can install it, not least setting up the uh, outhouse, which will be a project for later in the year. I've got a few other things to do before I can get that built and then get this into place. But I'm very much looking forward to that. So it's getting on a bit now. I haven't eaten much. Sean bought me lunch, but we're getting on for uh, early in the evening. The essay is lit. And so I think I'm going to make myself a salad and an omelette. It's much deserved. And then tomorrow, I think I shall clean up this beast and have a look at it in more detail. But by golly, it is heavy.